I think you need to distinguish between this idea that only a handful of companies are going to win and largely the incumbent large cap companies and the idea that there's going to be a robust wave of innovation that's going to cause a lot of you know, small and emerging companies to build amazing franchises. Uh, the market seems to right now believe that, oh, AI is great. That means three or four companies are going to win. But you can see with what's happening to Google, Google that disruptive technology is by its nature disruptive. Typically, large cap incumbents stumble when there are platform shifts. And it's very evident that in technology, this is a platform shift and it doesn't stand to benefit the incumbent providers, it actually puts them at risk. Google's search franchise is at risk. That's why they've been moving so slow with AI. And the artificial intelligence systems that they've released have been underperformant and a year behind. Uh, the same is true for Apple. Look at Siri. It's really startlingly incompetent relative to what you can get from OpenAI or Anthropic or any of the emerging platform companies that are developing these systems. So I think you need to distinguish between kind of this expectation that that the companies that have won in the last cycle are going to win in this cycle and therefore they are worth paying for at any price and the idea that there's going to be literally trillions of dollars of enterprise value created over the course of this business cycle accruing in pockets that people might not expect. Can I just quickly ask you because you're saying you know the companies that won in the last cycle won't win in this cycle but they've got skin in the game with all of these you know the, the, the major uh, I suppose startups if we're talking about the likes of Anthropic the likes of Perplexity so don't they still win even even OpenAI when we're talking about Microsoft Sure Microsoft has a really interesting position and I think meta strategy to open source models makes sense um, but who has the economic leverage in, uh, in even the cooperation between Microsoft and OpenAI? It's pretty evident that OpenAI does. Uh, Microsoft has tried to use um, uh, ChatGPT to drive volume through Bing, and that's largely not succeeded. Instead, people are going direct to the language model to get their answers. Uh, and so I think that um, we'll see how kind of Microsoft's co-pilot initiative plugs OpenAI's um, models into its office productivity suite. But it seems more likely and consistent with history that we're entering a new operating system era, an era where language is the primary input. And, and uh, in new operating system eras, usually there's a new platform that accrues most of the economic benefit. So it would be something of a surprise if it was the same companies winning, winning again and again and again. Not to, notwithstanding the law of large numbers where it's really hard to make a difference to Microsoft's top line, even if you're driving huge volumes of spend into AI chips and AI models, um, whereas a smaller company that is aggressively deploying AI against software advances that can deliver, uh, you know, profound productivity improvements to knowledge workers uh, could grow very, very large in a very short amount of time, given the, the thirst from enterprises to spend and take advantage of these advances.